Alexa, turn off the chair shade. Today on The Hookup, we're going to make a motorized smart shade that can be controlled with Amazon Echo and your MQTT smart home controller for around 125 bucks. Let's start out by looking at each of the products we're going to use for this project. I use this shade from Amazon.com. It's available in 4x6, 6x6, 8x6, and 10x6. I specifically use the 6x6 version, but my setup would work fine with the 4x6 or the 8x6 version as well. The 10x6 version might be a bit much for a single motor to handle, so I'd steer clear of that one. I like these shades because they significantly reduce the amount of sunlight passing through without completely blocking the view of the pool in the backyard. They let a decent amount of breeze through and they're very weather resistant. They fit my needs perfectly, but if you're looking for a blackout shade, these are not going to cut it. Next, we need a motor to move these things. I opted for a planetary geared stepper motor with a 5 to 1 gear ratio. Stepper Online makes super high quality stepper motors for relatively cheap. When I made my original project, I purchased them on Amazon.com for around $45 each. But Stepper Online was nice enough to send me some to make this video. So thanks Stepper Online. I'm also going to give away this motor at the end, so watch all the way through. Let's talk briefly about the important differences between a stepper motor and a normal DC motor. When you apply current to a DC motor, it spins in one direction. Raise the voltage and it spins faster. Flip the polarity and it spins in the opposite direction. Those are all really useful things. But one thing you can't do with a normal DC motor is move to a specific location and lock it in that position. That's where a stepper motor shines. A stepper motor uses four wires instead of two. Applying current to two of those wires will advance the motor exactly one step. If you wanted to go the next step, you'll need to apply current to the other two wires. The motor we selected has a step angle of 0.35 degrees, which means every step rotates the shaft of the motor by only 0.35 degrees. This is really useful information when you consider that that lets us know the exact amount that our shades have been rolled down at any given time. For this specific case, we know that we'll need to do 1,028 steps in order to move our motor one full rotation without considering micro-stepping. The decision to use planetary gears was just as important as the decision to use a stepper motor in the first place. Planetary gears allow us to amplify the torque of our stepper motor by a factor of five in this case. That's important because it means that a less torquey stepper motor will still be able to supply the needed rotational force to roll the shades up and down. But the other reason it's important is that it also makes it five times more difficult for the weight of the shades to rotate the shaft of the stepper. And that'll help us prevent slippage in between steps and when the stepper motor is sleeping. When I made my shades over a year ago, I tried a ton of non-geared high torque stepper motors, but none of them worked exactly how I wanted them to. The planetary gear motor worked almost immediately. Another good option for this project would have been to use a DC motor with a motor encoder. But I really like stepper motors, so that's what I used. Since a stepper motor needs to have a relatively large current pulsed rapidly, you'll also need a stepper motor driver to handle the heavy lifting. I really like the quality of the products from Stepper Online, so I asked them to send me one of their drivers. Unfortunately, I didn't do enough research before requesting the driver from them, and the one I got wasn't compatible with the 3.3 volt logic that the ESP8266 outputs. I went ahead and just bought the same driver that I used for my first two shades, and it works flawlessly. The other upside is it's one of the cheapest ones available on Amazon. For a microcontroller, I used an ESP8266 based Node MCU because I'm super comfortable with them. If you're going to be placing these outside far away from your wireless router, I'd recommend you take a look at the Wemos D1 Mini Pro since it has an external Wi-Fi antenna. My Arduino sketch will work fine on the Node MCU or the D1 Pro without any modification, so go with whichever one works best for you. We'll also need a way to power our microcontroller. Since we already have a 12 volt power source for our stepper motors, I used a buck converter to step that down to 5 volts. If you'd rather not mess with the buck converter, you can also just power it with another USB cord attached to a wall charger. Those are the main parts that I needed to buy. But let's quickly talk about everything that I already had around from previous projects. You'll need wire of some kind. 
I used CAT6 cable because it's what I had around. It has four twisted pairs and I used one twisted pair for each of the four wires on the stepper motor. If I was going to buy wire specifically for this project, I'd get one of these 250 foot spools of four core 18 gauge wire. For 30 bucks, it's an absolute steal. It's like 12 cents a foot. You'll also need some wire to hook up the stepper motor driver. I used male to female jumper wires and they're perfect for this because that means you won't have to solder anything. You'll also need an AC adapter. I used an old 12 volt one from an HP printer. Anything from 12 to 19 volts will work perfectly and two amps should be plenty. You'll also need some M3 screws to mount your stepper motor to the bracket. Of course, all the specific parts that I use are linked down in the description. I also used a 3D printer to make the connector hub between the stepper motor and the shade. If you don't have a 3D printer, you're not alone, so don't get discouraged. But there are probably tons of different places around you where you can access one. Do a Google search for your local makerspace, and you may be surprised how many there actually are. Sometimes you can even 3D print at your local library. Once you get access to a 3D printer, I'd recommend printing this part with at least 80% infill and 3 to 4 shells. If you use less than that, the hub may strip itself out when rotating. Now I might regret doing this because I'm really not interested in getting into the 3D printing business, but as a last resort, if you can't find it anywhere else, I'm going to add a $10 tier to my Patreon page called 3D Printer. And if you sign up for it, I will print out this part and send it to you as a reward for that tier. So, if you needed to buy absolutely everything that I just mentioned for this project, it's going to run you around 125 bucks. I built mine for 175 for the pair, but I only had to buy the motors, the drivers, and the shades. And I had all the rest of the parts laying around as leftovers from other projects. All right, let's build it. We'll start out by making some modifications to our shades. Start by removing the mounting plug from the end of the rod. We're going to replace this with our 3D printed part that has the mounting hub for the stepper motor instead. Next, you'll need to modify the end that comes with the pull chain. Start by removing the screw from the front and pull off the rod mount. Inside, there's a clutch to stop the shade from moving when the chain isn't under tension. You can remove the clutch and the gear set completely. When you replace the rod mount onto the shaft, just offset the notches so that they aren't in the middle of the little prongs on the springs. You can remove sets of springs here if you need to change the amount of resistance to rolling. If your stepper motor doesn't seem powerful enough to unroll your shade, you can remove a few springs. If your shade is unrolling by itself, just add them back. Next, we need to modify our mounting brackets to accommodate for our stepper motor. This part was actually super difficult for me to get the holes right. Luckily, I've already done the legwork for you here and I created a PDF file with a template for where to drill the holes. Make sure when you print out the PDF, you have the actual size option selected and not fit to page or shrink to page or any of those other options. The bracket we're gonna modify is the one without the tab. Remove the eight screws on the back of the bracket and tape the template onto the face. Drill out the mounting holes and cut out the center hole with a Dremel tool. If you don't have a Dremel tool, you can just drill small holes around the center hole and then remove the rest of the material with a pair of pliers. Next, attach your stepper motor to the bracket with those M3 screws we talked about earlier. Next, we'll move on to the code. My code is fairly simple and it utilizes the AH Easy Driver library for stepper motors. The code is based off the fact that these shades will go from completely rolled to completely unrolled in 13 full rotations. If you're using a different shade, you'll want to change the unrolled variable to something other than 13, whichever max value you need. You'll also need to edit the user configuration section and put in your Wi-Fi and MQTT information. If you've had a bad experience with Arduino in the past, or you're just against using the Arduino IDE and you'd rather use the Flash ESP8266 tool that Dr. Z's lovingly refers to as ESP Easy, I've also uploaded a bin file for you with a configuration portal so you can avoid having to install the different libraries and use the Arduino IDE. After flashing the bin file to your microcontroller, you'll notice a new wireless network pop-up called Shade Config. Connect to it and navigate to 192.168.4.1. Put in your wireless information and your MQTT information. The MQTT client will be used to create unique topics for each of your shades, so make sure you remember it and make sure it doesn't have any spaces. 
I've also added a number of rotations input in case you want to use this program with another shade that requires a different number of rotations to fully unroll. If you're using the same shade as me, just leave this number as 13. You'll need to set up a way to control the shades by sending them MQTT values. I personally use Home Assistant, but most of the popular home automation platforms should be able to handle this task no problem. I've configured mine as an input slider with an automation to send the value we select to the MQTT topic that we specified in our code. That topic is shade position front slash and then the client ID that you selected. It's very important here to use a retain flag because our MQTT server is going to store our shades position for us in the event of a reboot of our node MCU. Once we've got our code loaded up and your MQTT message is configured, you can test it with your stepper motor and driver. The driver has three pins that need to be connected to your microcontroller. The dir positive input on the driver connects to the GPIO4, which is marked as D2 on the board. The pull positive input on the driver connects to the GPIO0, which is marked as D3 on the board, and the NA positive input connects to GPIO13, which is D7 on the board. You'll also need to connect each of the negative inputs to ground. I connected them to ground with a single wire to my node MCU, and then I bridged the connections together with small pieces of wire. Next, you'll attach the four wires of your stepper motor to the driver. The black wire connects to A positive, green to A negative, red to B positive, and blue to B negative. Then attach your power supply to VDC and ground. Remember, if you're using a buck converter, you'll need to attach it to your input voltage and then turn the set screw on the top of the board until your output voltage is correct. I try to shoot for around 4.8 volts if I'm using a Node MCU. Before we plug it in, let's double check that our dip switches are in the right place. Our stepper motor is rated for 1.68 amps, so we're going to set the current limit on the driver accordingly. We also want to set the resolution to 800 pulses per revolution because we're going to utilize micro-stepping to get a little extra torque. This means our dip switch setup is going to be on, off, off, and on, on, off. Alright, let's test it out. To test it, I'd recommend turning the shaft of the motor manually before you plug it in and line up the little collar on the shaft with one of the screws on the motor. We want to make sure that our motor moves in full rotations, so send your motor a command to move 13 full rotations, and if it rotates 13 times and ends up in the same place that it started, that means you're ready to install. Mount the brackets loosely on either side of the shade and slide the mounting hub onto the stepper motor shaft. Once everything is in place, you can slide the brackets closer together and make everything fit nicely. Once you've got everything where you want it, tighten the mounting screws to the wall and you're all done. Before you plug it in, make sure you've sent a message of 13 to your MQTT topic with a retain flag. With Home Assistant, all you need to do is slide the slider all the way to the end. You also want to start your shade completely unrolled. Not only because it's much easier to mount it this way, but also because that's the position that corresponds to position 13. Now it's time to plug it in and test it out. The sleep function on a stepper driver turns off all the power to the motor at specific positions. Not only does this save power, but it also puts less stress on both the driver and the motor. The Arduino program that I wrote is set to sleep at position 0, which is fully rolled up, and position 13, which is fully unrolled. If you set a different value in the configuration setting, it will sleep at whatever maximum value you set. What this means for you is that if the values ever get uncalibrated, all you need to do is send an MQTT value of 13, or whatever your max is, and then after the shade is done moving, you can manually pull it down to its maximum value. This shouldn't ever really be a problem unless some kid in your family decides to hang on the shade while it's trying to move. Not that that's ever happened. If everything went according to plan, you're done, and you should be able to control your shades with Home Assistant. Test it out by sending different values to the shades. The great part about this code is that it doesn't get confused if you send a new value before the old one has finished processing. If you find that your shades are rolling up the wrong way, you can just reverse the positive and negative wires for each of the A and B motor pairs in your driver, and the motor will spin in the opposite direction. I also have my shades set up to turn on and off and go to specific positions using commands from my Amazon Echo. I did this in Node Red using the Alexa local node. I'm going to post my Node Red flows in the description, but I also covered it in depth in my second Node Red how to video. You can click this link 
to go there now. Thanks to Stepper Online, I now have an extra Stepper motor, and I bought some other stuff just to make this video. That sounds like a great time to do my first giveaway. And since I just started this Patreon thing, what I'm going to do is in two weeks, I'm going to randomly select one of my patrons and I'm going to send them a pre-programmed Node MCU, a stepper driver, the geared stepper motor, and the 3D printed hub. All patrons who have joined as of August 22nd will be automatically entered into the drawing. If I were Sean, I'd be feeling pretty good about my odds right now. If you get stuck anywhere while building this project, just post down in the comments. I'm pretty good about responding quickly most of the time. Links to the exact parts that I used are in the description. So if you stick with those, you really shouldn't run into any problems. I know this video has been a long time coming and hopefully it's lived up to your expectations. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.